once in a while someone comes up with a new explanation for the mystery of the Fermi paradox. Why is it that we're not detecting any extraterrestrial intelligence, even though statistically, because of the amount of planets out there and because of the assumptions from the famous Drake equation, we should maybe see or hear at least someone. And though obviously there is still no exact answer and no exact explanation for why there seems to be no one out there, there are obviously a lot of ideas, opinions and speculations, many of which have been explored in the Fermi Paradox playlist that you can find in the description. But today we're going to discuss something else that was just proposed, that in essence uses geological answers or geological solutions in order to clarify why we don't see anyone, but to also correct some of the assumptions in the Drake equation, with the main focus basically being plate tectonics. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to focus on this new study that you can find in the description below, that tries to answer the mystery of the Fermi paradox by focusing on the geological uniqueness of planet Earth, and specifically the idea known as the plate tectonics. And I guess first, let's do a brief summary of what plate tectonics are and why they make the Earth the way it is. And plate tectonics used to be a controversial idea as well. It wasn't even accepted until late 1960s and was basically seen as a kind of a fringe idea of science that did not initially have a lot of proof. But once geologists discovered enough clues around various subduction zones, especially near the seafloor, where the spreading oceanic plates end up forming very specific magnetic stripes that actually cannot be explained in any other way, this fringe idea eventually became an actual theory. A theory that today is pretty well known, pretty well established and explains so much about our planet. With the idea being that Earth is made up of these large solid formations we refer to as tectonic plates, which very slowly move around and have been doing so for at least a few billion years. Here is roughly what the motion of some of them looks like based on extremely accurate observations using the GPS system. And the reason they move around is because they seem to be relatively rigid while floating on a somewhat liquidy asthenosphere. But because they also possess different densities, they tend to interact with each other in very different ways. For example, various subduction zones usually contain relatively dense oceanic crust that tends to sink into the mantle as it moves above continental crust that tends to be a lot less dense. And their density is a result of their formation. In case of oceanic crust, it tends to have less silicon and more heavier elements and thus tends to be denser. Whereas continental crust is usually formed through various types of volcanism as well as various types of accretion that tends to create something that's much less dense. And this simple interaction actually creates an extremely complex geological process that has been influencing planet Earth for billions of years. For example, in one of the previous videos you can find in the description, we've discussed how mountains form as a result of a multi-billion year interaction between subducting plates and a lot of carbon-based compounds deposited by ancient life. If you want to just read the study about this, it should be somewhere in the description. And so essentially, a lot of unique features on planet Earth might be the result of plate tectonics changing the planet for billions of years and making it a perfect place for life to develop. For example, some of these ocean plates that sunk billions of years ago still have a lot of effects inside our planet and possibly even play a role in forming the magnetosphere. But interestingly, no other planet in the solar system seems to have the same geological effects. For example, our sister planet Venus, despite having volcanism, does not have plate tectonics. And that was probably one of the main reasons it eventually became a super hot, super pressurized, hell-like planet. Likewise, there is nothing on Mars. And that's despite having the largest volcano in the solar system with signs of major eruptions billions of years ago. And that means that something makes Earth special. And for many years geologists believed that that something was a combination of liquid water that basically soaked the crust, making it wet enough to create various formations such as shear zones, but possibly something else that happened to the planet billions of years ago that transformed tectonics from being a single plate event to a multiple plate event. What that something is, is still unknown, but it could have been either some kind of a massive collision or possibly tidal effects from the moon and the sun, or maybe something entirely different. Either way, in the last 2 billion years, 
This eventually led to plate tectonics as we know them. And though there is some evidence that other objects containing water do actually have their own version of plate tectonics, such as evidence by NASA from Jupiter's moon Europa that was discovered in 2014, but here the subduction activity is not as complex and basically just involves water ice melting inside a liquid ocean, with something similar potentially discovered on Titan, the moon of Saturn. But despite of that, Earth is still unique in a solar system and, as the recent study suggests, potentially represents an extremely rare type of a terrestrial planet. A planet that doesn't just have active tectonics, but has plate tectonics that constantly move around and constantly evolve over time. And what's interesting is that, in the last few years, a lot of researchers realized that the type of tectonics on planet Earth might have changed in just the last billion years. And specifically, during the Metoproterozoic period, and this was basically when the Earth was about 1.6 billion years old, Earth might have only had active single lit tectonics that were a lot less effective at producing necessary conditions for complex life. But then, sometimes between that and the Neoproterozoic period, so possibly around a billion years ago, the geological activity switched to plate tectonics, dramatically shifting everything on the planet. And this surprisingly coincides with the formation of complex life and of course the origin of all of the multicellular complex life that can be found in every single biome on Earth today. And here the researchers even give us a comparison between the single lid and plate tectonics events just to help us understand how different they were. For example, a typical single lid tectonic event is just not very good at controlling climate or forming specific habitats for various life to evolve. Whereas once plate tectonics become active, it allows for extremely active recirculation of everything from within the planet, while also stabilizing climate through various feedback mechanisms. And so it might have been the reason why planet Earth in the last billion years was able to finally transition from single cellular life and mostly various extremophiles to suddenly having so much diversity everywhere with the researchers in the study basically suggesting that complex life requires continents and oceans. Or essentially, they try to answer the question, why did life take so long to move beyond simple organisms? But moreover, they go a little bit further. Here they suggest that even advanced intelligent life could really only form on similar planets. And so for advanced life to create technology in order to communicate, they would require a planet like planet Earth with liquid water, but also plate tectonics and active geological processes, something that has to be around for at least 500 million years in order for that life to evolve. And so in that sense, they basically propose a kind of a missing variable for the famous Drake equation. The equation that tries to estimate the chances for finding some kind of an advanced civilization somewhere out there. With one of the ideas being that in order to even have these advanced civilizations, at some point, life would have to transition to land in order to then evolve complexity. And all of this could only happen if the planet has continents and these continents are rich in resources. And that's because these geological processes assist evolution of complex life in at least five different ways. First, they speed up oxygenation, allowing complex brains to evolve. Then they also provide a kind of a climate control they also create a non-catastrophic environmental pressure that forces organisms to evolve and to adapt while also increasing supplies of nutrients and the formation of new habitats, increasing diversity of life. Or at least that's the conclusion based on planet Earth. But when it comes to other planets, they also discover that these types of planets might be not very common. And so here we have two additional factors to add to the equation. First, large oceans and continents but second, plate tectonics lasting for at least 500 million years, which actually changes the results for this quite dramatically. Originally, Frank Drake estimated the numbers of these advanced civilizations to be anywhere between a thousand to hundred million just in our galaxy alone. But obviously, based on various observations, and of course based on the Fermi paradox, we don't seem to see any of them, with these numbers potentially being a little bit too high. But once you estimate numbers using the new formula, the modified Drake equation assumes the number between 0.006 civilizations and maximum of 100,000. And so still quite a wide estimate, but definitely a lot less optimistic. 
And the implication here is that, well, the primitive life might be quite common, but the complex life might actually have trouble developing unless these geological conditions are met. And because it's also extremely unlikely that several planets are going to coexist around the same time and have exactly the same geological conditions, this could explain why we're not actually hearing from any civilizations and why alien civilizations might be extremely rare. Although here they also propose the idea known as COPT, continents, oceans, and plate tectonics. Essentially planets that potentially have these conditions right now, but might not yet have any complex life. And here they propose that these types of planets might be extremely common, but are currently in different levels of evolution and are potentially suitable for alien civilizations, but just don't have them yet. And more importantly, they propose that finding such planets should be possible in the next decade or so. And that's because the number of such planets seems to be at least 500 up to about 1 million in our galaxy right now. And so at least one of these planets could be discovered at some point. Although exactly how we're going to identify plate tectonics on the surface is obviously currently unknown. But the point is that if plate tectonics is a very rare geological feature, and if it's obviously crucial for complex life, it could maybe explain why we're not detecting any alien life out there and why we seem to be kind of alone. And so definitely an intriguing potential answer to the Fermi paradox. But at least for now, that's kind of, I guess, all we know. Once there's some additional propositions or more explanations, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.